So you might know that your internet speed is 200 megabits per second, that your camera is 8 megapixels resolution or 20 frames per second, maybe even 600 kilobits per second bitrate. But you probably don't know what all of those numbers mean. Uh, and what you really want to find out is how many cameras your network can record to the cloud if you want cloud CCTV. And a common assumption is that it's hard to get your video data up over the internet to the cloud. And we're going to show you today how to make sense of these numbers and explain that it's much easier than you think. So internet providers tend to talk in megabits per second. And actually what you're often getting isn't what's quoted. So you can find out what you're actually getting by doing a speed test. Let's get this one running. And you can do that on your phone, you can do it on your laptop, or there's a speed test in the VideoLoft app. It often takes kind of 20, 30 seconds to analyze what the network's doing. So this one here, this network has 200 megabits per second down and 50 megabits per second up. And as we all know, the internet was built to watch Netflix and cat videos on YouTube. <laughs> and so the connection speed is generally faster on the way down, so bringing data to you and slower on the way up because it's not so much needed for that. So when you use the uplink, it's for your emails or any other kinds of transmission. The video side of this in the security context is using the uplink. So it's the smaller number of the two numbers you're quoted when you're looking at the uh, internet connection speed of your ISP, your internet service provider. And we're gonna show you now just how much video you can get over that uplink. It's significantly more than you think. The next thing to think about is how much data the video that's being sent up to the cloud is producing. And the first part of that is resolution. So the light that's falling on your camera is collected on a sensor, which we talk about in terms of megapixels. What that actually means is the sensor is made up of lots and lots of pixels, which are measured in the millions, hence the prefix mega. And for the purposes of simplicity today, we're only going to talk about two types of resolution, two megapixels and eight megapixels. So a two megapixel security camera has 1920 pixels across and 1080 pixels down. And multiplying those two together gives you around 2 million pixels, which is why it's a two megapixel camera. And in the industry, that's often referred to as HD or 1080p. Then with an eight megapixel camera, you've got 3840 pixels across and 2160 pixels down. And multiplying those two together gives you around 8 million pixels, so 8 megapixels. Quite confusingly, that's often referred to as 4K or Ultra HD. Um, and that's because 8 million pixels is four times 2 million pixels. And although the video in 8 megapixels is four times the size of 2 megapixels, thanks to a technology called compression, it doesn't use four times the data. So the bitrate of the video determines the size of the files which are being sent up over your internet connection. And it's a combination of frame rate and quality. It's a bit of a compromise. You want the best quality possible, but using the lowest amount of data. And when we talk about frame rate, we're just talking about how many pictures make up every second of video. Video is just lots of moving pictures. So a high frame rate is lots of pictures per second, so it's very smooth. And a low frame rate is not many uh, pictures per second, which is more jerky. For example, here is a video of our cameraman James walking along at 5 frames per second. And here's a video of James walking along at 25 frames per second. You'll notice that at 25 frames per second, it's a lot smoother. And this is the frame rate typically seen in broadcast television. For video security purposes, particularly when we're uploading them over the internet, here at VideoLoft, we find the right sweet spot in frame rate is around 10 frames per second. That gives decent fluidity of motion for a very low corresponding bitrate. So quality is really subjective, but a security camera is stationary, so you can get away with more compression than you would do for an action camera that's moving, filming a movie. And bit rates measured in kilobits per second. So a video loft camera that's two megapixels will be at a bit rate of between 400 and 600, and an eight megapixel camera will have a bit rate of about 1800 kilobits per second. 
It's also worth pointing out that internet connection speeds are constantly increasing and the technology necessary to compress the video for a given bit rate is improving the whole time. So we expect to be increasing the quality of the video for very little, if any, increase in uh, uplink speeds over time. Now we've got all the information we need to work out how many cameras this network can support. So we had 50 megabits per second upload and bitrate is measured in kilobits per second. So you need to times that by a thousand, which gives us 50,000 kilobits per second. And the eight megapixel cameras that we've got here are 1800 kilobits per second. So you divide that and that gives you 28 cameras. So this network can support 28 cameras running at eight megapixel resolution. So what Laura's fancy maths has shown us is that you can get up to 28 cameras on this example uplink. The reality is, however, that it's very unusual for cameras to be running continuously 24 seven. Actually, what we see across the whole of the video loft network, which is typical of a cloud connected system, is that the cameras are only active for roughly 10% of the time, which means you can have a great deal of cameras running on a given network. And if there is a busy period where all of the cameras are trying to send video up at the same time but can't, then the Videoloft Cloud Adapter has some onboard storage which acts as a buffer. So if the video can't be sent up, it's stored on this little box and once the network capacity is improved, then the video is automatically sent up to the cloud. Okay, so we've talked about the various factors that influence how many cameras you can get up over your uplink. We've also looked at some specific examples. The one we did the maths for was for eight megapixels. However, if you just want a very rough rule of thumb to assess a site for how many cameras you can get over it, I suggest you use this simple concept. For every 10 megabits of uplink, you can get between five super high definition cameras and 20 low definition cameras over that uplink. So for 10 megabit connection, you've got somewhere between five and 20 cameras that you can operate safely over the uplink. And if you don't want to do the maths yourself, the speed test in the Videoloft app actually tells you how many cameras of each resolution your network can support.